Can you hear me? I heard a terrible echo there. I just wanted to know if you could hear me before I start. Just write it in the room. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for coming, everyone, and welcome. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And today I'm going to talk about how you as a trader, an individual, if you're not a trader, can make six figures a year trading 30 minutes a day. I day trade, okay, that's my main focus as a trader, and so what that means is that I'm in and out of trades quickly in the first half an hour of the day. It's a prime, prime time to get moves in stocks that in particular that are setting up that I'm looking for that are gapping. And if you don't know what a gap is, we're going to go over that today as well. I don't think it benefits people trading all day until 4 o'clock. People tend to give money away the more trades that they do. So what I focus on is just capturing a move in a stock in this first half an hour period between 9.30 and 10. Okay? Now I just wrote hi there. If you have any questions as we're going along, you can just type the question in the room, okay? I will see it and I will say the question out loud and answer it for everyone. If you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com and feel free to you know, follow me at any one of these social media places and also you can give me a call if you have questions on my method at 929-3200-GAP. Uh, just to talk a little bit here, I wanted to talk about some general day trading questions that I, I, I've gotten recently, and I thought that they were important to, to talk about in tonight's webinar. Somebody emailed me over the weekend and they said, you know, Melissa, isn't trading gambling? And I said, no, you know, day trading is not gambling. You know, I think a lot of people do look at day trading that way. And one of the mistakes that people make is that they just don't take it serious enough and people will go into free webinars, trading room trials, trading room open houses, do you know cheap classes, and they will do all of this without really a lot of thought or seriousness to what they're doing because they don't want to spend a lot of money or take a lot of time to learn because in their mind, their belief system is that trading is gambling, and it's a 50-50 kind of shot, all right? That's what a lot of people think their odds are. I will tell you, when I take a trade, I don't look at it like 50-50. Now, is there a possibility that every trade I take may work or fail? Yes, but in my mind, I have such a, such a strict system, such, a, uh, such an analytical system. I do so much analysis and prep work before I trade, okay? which is what you would learn from me, that to me, before I decide to take a trade or take any risk at all, I do not look at it like 50-50. I look at it more like 95 by 5 or 99 by 1. I mean, which, which may sound crazy, but that is how I look at it. So if, if you're one of these people that thinks that trading is gambling, that it's probably because you have absolutely no idea what you're doing, okay? and you don't have any conviction in the philosophy or even idea or concept that that what you would trade that what you would decide to trade or the stock you would decide to trade because i trade stocks would actually have a high probability of working in your favor to predict okay for example we are going to go over the trade from today the trade from today i shorted a and f and it worked so what I'm looking to do every morning before I trade is predict what stock's going to work and in what direction I'm going to take it before I take the trade. And so this idea of gambling, if you want to do this, the best thing that you can do for yourself is to get this idea out of your head because if you truly believe this, then you're, you're, you're not going to do well, okay? So it is about taking it serious and that's about the focus. And it's about the prep work and the time you're taking to do things. You know, one of the reasons you have to be very thoughtful about your trades, not over trade, have a system, be ready to go, know what to do, okay? Have the conviction is because there's a lot of people in the market. This guy, this guy, here's all the money. Okay, mountains and mountains and mountains. But because everybody wants the same money, okay? You have to 
go into it with a structure and a strategy and a mindset to take it and to take the bag of money and to win, to win, okay? If you're thinking of it like gambling, it's not gonna work out for you, okay? Now, here was the gap from this morning. Now, for those of you that don't know what a gap is, I'm gonna tell you, this is a very basic explanation, but when a stock gaps, it closes at a certain price the night before at four o'clock, which in this case would have been Friday because it was the last trading day, which was last week. Today is Monday morning. And a stock opens at a different price on the following morning. So today was Monday morning. So this ANF opened at a different price at 9.30. Then it closed at four o'clock Friday. And what I'm showing you here is the gap happening live. So here we have all of this here, this is a 15 minute, this is the downward trading gap selling off in ANF in the pre-market. So in the morning I get up, when I'm looking for stocks to trade, which I found this this morning, this is the gap happening live. Down here you have the time of day. So all of this is in the pre-market. So you hear, here's 9.30, this is before 9.30. Then you have the live day. So this was a short. So actually this stock had a huge move of the day. Now going back to what I was discussing with you, how can you make six figures a year trading 30 minutes? Well, I'm gonna show you the setup of the trade. But the first thing is to find the right stock to trade. And you gotta get the direction right. If you went long the stock today, you lost anywhere you took it. If you shorted it today, you made money, which is what I did. So the stock closed the night before up here and open down here in the morning. So again, this was Friday at four o'clock, around $12 and some cents. Monday morning here, boom. Opens at 10 something. This is the gap happening. And here you can't see it because I have it separated on the daily chart. But it's actually, this is the stuff I'm looking at in the morning when I'm predicting that I want to short A and F on the day, which I wait until the open. So here was the trade. This now is a one minute chart, okay? So remember I told you I'm looking to take trades between 9.30 and 10. So the stock closed here, gap down, boom, dropped, doom, was in it. Shorted it, stop here, got the drop. Now I got out very quickly in this, but I will tell you the stock kept going, okay? Kept going. Target was 10, then next target was 980, 975. This stock bled all day. It really was a good short. I could have made more money in this, but I was very happy for the money I made, but this was a nice move. So for those of you that you know are looking to do what I do, you will be trading in this time period, in this first half an hour. But this is a good example here where actually you could have held it more. I'm gonna go back, there's a daily bar. I don't know where this closed, but it was close probably to the low here. So this is what I do. I'm looking to get trades just like this, boom, boom, every morning. And I usually only do one trade. Every once in a while, I will do two, but usually only one. And we will go over the, the stats for the trading room calls in the last month in a little bit here. but. Does anyone have any questions on this? If you are completely unfamiliar with gaps, don't worry about it. You will learn what I do. If you are unfamiliar with shorting, the concept really is very simple. Again, not complicated. It's about the idea that I'm predicting the stock price will drop. And when I'm predicting the price will drop, if I'm taking the trade and the price does drop in my favor down, then I short it and I get out when the price drops. In the case here, for example, if you would have shorted the stock at 10.65, boom, and got the drop anywhere under 10.65, if you would have taken the trade out, covered it, okay, it's, you covered the trade to buy to cover, you would have been profitable. So shorted this trade 10.65, stop was 11.10. Exit for me, again, was, was really quickly. In six minutes, I did this trade, and it ended up going to 9.60, 9.50 something it actually went to but I like to get in that quick, and my goal for the day is in. Profit in this trade, $1,470 in six minutes. So you can see here how you don't have to be in something long. 
Now, sometimes you might want to hold it. This was a very good gap today, okay? I have a system that I'm looking at that I follow. It is a rating system for choosing the stock. This rated good today, rated 21 points per my 26 point system, but my goal was in, it hit the first target, boom, I was out. Another really important thing, if you wanna hit these, these kind of numbers that we're gonna talk about today, you know, making six figures a year, is when you are up in a trade and your goal is, is in for the day, you have to be right on top of it because something can reverse against you. It is very important to book money in trades on a consistent basis over and over and you just keep the losses down. I call it chunking it out, okay? Any questions here about ANF? Really nice trade here, really good short, really big move for the stock to start out the week, to start out Monday. Any questions about this? So every day I'm looking to capture the move quickly, quickly in the morning. Just get in, get out, get in, get out, get in, get out, okay? But I'm figuring all this out here in the pre-market. So I'm, I'm not making that split second decision on the live day. I'm, I'm actually doing it, all the work in the prep, saying this is the one, I like it. Of course, I don't get in it though until after it sets up. Let me go back here. I don't get in the trade until actually on the open. I do not trade in the pre and post market. Are stocks respected? Yes, they are respected because I put them in. It's not an imaginary stop, it's a real stop. John just asked, are stocks respected? It's not about respect, it's I put it in. Boom, if I put, as soon as I take the trade, doom, I get it in. You have to, otherwise all is lost. What if this did not happen? But what if it didn't work, okay? Let's just say, for example, this did not, I shorted it here. Let's just say it went two, and it went all the way up. Literally, as fast as this dropped, it could have gone in the opposite direction. That did not happen. But if it had, guess what? My losses would be unlimited. So it is a stop. The order is there. You get it in. And if it hits you out, then you lose in the trade. But you want to be out. I'm not afraid of stops. I don't, I don't understand why some traders are anti-stops. I mean, I just, I, I think, I, it's funny. I was having a conversation with somebody, the, this is like a couple weeks ago, and they were like, you're one of the few people that I know that continually loses stops. And I'm like, yeah, yes. <laughs> I have for, you know, eight years. I will for the rest of my life. I mean, I just can't see myself ever not using stops. I mean, as long as I'm an individual trader. Obviously, if you take, you know, 150,000 shares of something, if I owned a fund, it, there would be nothing like that where I'd have a hard stop in. But, I mean, I still would have placements where I would know the trade would be off and it wouldn't work. Then you'd have to take it off. But the problem is, as a day trader, you don't have a lot of time if it reverses against you, number one. And number two, a lot of times people just go, eh, and they freeze. And then, then, they, then they don't take it off. So you avoid that issue of yourself freezing up like a jackrabbit by just putting the stop in. You are deciding, I'm gonna risk a thousand bucks today, $500, 200 bucks. You size yourself accordingly, boom, you take it, okay? So I usually rough out my size. In this case here today, you know, you can, you rough it, 40 cents, 50 cents. You know, you have a short amount of time to take the trade. Either way, if it fails, you're out, if the stock goes over the number. That's, that's, you know, you're gonna learn from me if you wanna do the class, you've gotta put the stop in. If you don't, it's, it, you know, I think that's crazy, to be honest with you. And I've had people come back to me and then they say, oh, I didn't put a stop. And they know they should put stops. So, you know, what can I say? You know, I'm not, I'm teaching you things that you've gotta do. If you wanna come and learn from me, you gotta follow the system. I'd, I've never regretted putting a stop in. Never my whole life. Now, let me talk about something else here because people ask me this too before we, get into the trades more. Some questions about trading with me, okay? What, what's the deal? What's the easiest and hardest things about trading with me? Because if you want to learn my system and you want to trade with me in the room, people ask a lot of questions. What is the easiest thing about trading with me? Well, the easiest thing about trading with me 
is really truly that I call one stock symbol at a time. Okay, one usually per day, one at a time. Even if I look at two things, I'm only doing one stock symbol at a time. Okay, very easy to follow. I call the exact entry stop and targets for the exit. I'm very focused, so it's easy to follow me and duplicate my trades, which if you'd be in the room, that's what you'd want to do. Also, I'm mostly short. I, I do occasionally go long, but I prefer to short. So it's really not confusing for you to figure out, is Melissa going long or short today? You always mostly go short. If we're going long, I say, we are going long today, and I make a big deal of it. So then you know that too, because a lot of other trading rooms, you don't know if they're going long or short to stock, okay? So I call the trades in live time after the open. However, I also will give the number one pick before the open so that you'll have time to prepare which stock symbol to trade, have it up, get in your platform, figure everything out, okay? I give the targets in the morning before the room, the gap rating, and all of this advanced prep work, which I'm doing in the morning in the pre-market, really helps, and it helps you to be more organized. And, and I make more money when I'm more organized, okay? I don't trade on the fly. Now, what's the hardest thing about trading with me? The hardest thing about trading with me, for some reason, not to me, but I'm, I'm telling you what other people have told me, is that they have difficulty figuring out their exact sizing based on the risk, okay? So what this means is if I say, you know, the entry, 65 by 10, like just today, or 10 by 40, okay? 10 by 40 means your risk is what? 30 cents. But everybody risks different money amounts. Some are risking 100 bucks, some are risking 1,000 bucks, some are risking 250. You've got to know, okay, 30 cents times 500 shares. You have to know what your monetary risk is and then the quantity that you would take, which in this case here, if your stop was 30 cents and you're risking 300 bucks, you could take 1,000 shares. But, you know, you have to figure this out. People have given me, you know, they tell me that they find this difficult. I don't think it, I, I mean, I never found this difficult for myself. But, you know, for some reason, people do. I don't know why, but I'm telling you. So the best thing I would say is to have a calculator. <clears throat> okay, practice mathematical tables in your head, and I do give people cheat sheets after the class. That's the best thing that I can say to give you some some tips, but you, you do have to be somewhat good at math, and if you're not, you, get, you have to have a calculator, all right? Now, I'm gonna go over the last 27 trades that I called in the trading room, back since the last five weeks, because I took time off for the Memorial Day holiday and July 4th holiday. Things to note is it, it's really not a good idea, actually, to trade during the holiday week. I did get some feedback from people. There were some things to do last week. I was surprised, but the market volume was very, very low. I focus on trading stocks that move with a lot of volume, that are traded by hedge funds, you know, institutional traders, and most of those people take the holiday off or on vacation. So I focus on trading in the busy season, and we're getting set up now and ready for the busy season, which is third quarter earnings season. So when stocks gap, they gap for many reasons. Sometimes it's news, sometimes it's earnings. So third quarter earnings season means there will be lots of companies that report their third quarter earnings and they will gap. Now, whether they are good gaps or not good gaps, I won't know to the gap. And also, again, things can gap up and things can gap down. Any questions so far? Okay. So anyways, let's go back here. May 18th, Cisco, again, this is based on a $1,000 average risk here. Some was a little bit less, some was a little bit more, just so you know. Foot Locker was a good one, 2450, then was off for the Memorial Day period. May 31st was Coors, 700 bucks. Do you see here how you, you don't have to make some huge, huge R or risk amount per trade, and you can put together a decent week and month. Okay, and still hit your mark. The key is getting the trade right. The key is also getting out when you're up and also keeping your losses low. Now I did, um, this was June 1st here, there was two. HPE, which was a winner, 2,500, and EXPR, which was a loser. There are some days if I take a trade and one doesn't work that I will do two. That's up to you, but sometimes that's when I do the two or if there's something really, really good. Actually, you could have done A and F today twice. Some people in the room did and made more money. 
I just did the one. RH, 1,260 bucks, 6.5, no trades. June 6, HDS had two setups. This was a really good short. Two trades, $900 and $3,300, total profit, $4,200. So you will have big days in the course of a month, but not every single day. It doesn't matter if you keep your losses down and also, like on June 5th, no trades. There will be days when something does not meet your criteria. Again, this goes back to the idea of the gambling. Sometimes people want to gamble. They say, well, let's just try this one today. I don't, I don't do that anymore. You know, you don't just, you're risking $1,000 if that, if you get to that point where you're in advanced risk, it's like, you don't, it's not like, oh, I just, let me try this one. No, 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 okay? And if your mindset is that you're only risking even $100, you shouldn't think like that. Because if you ever want to get to the point that you're making a lot of money and you're risking 1000 you have to act like you, you care, okay? If you don't give a crap about risking 200 shares, how do you think you're going to give a crap about risking 5000 So you have to get your mind working like you care, 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 care. Like every trade is important. Everyone counts. Every amount of money that you make is valuable, all right? Now, June, this is the month of June here, June 7th, DLH is a short. Again, most of these are shorts, $1,000. Urban, 930. Pay was tough. Did two trades in the pay, first one failed. Did a retake in this one, but that was a hard, hard one in the pay. It was a short. Another day, there was no trades that met the criteria, June 12th. June 13th, cake was good but small. 400, HRB, 800, KR was a good gap, 2,080 bucks. Okay, see so here. Do you see here? Some days you will have a loss. Like the pay was was a crappy setup in the first one, and if you didn't do the second trade and lost the first one, it, you still had a solid week. And one day was no trades. Target twelve hundred spy was a little trade, which was a long. June twentieth, no trades. Adobe Adobe was fifteen sixty loss for me. That was actually a long. Didn't work out. Oracle 935 loss, and then BBBY was a good one on June 23rd, $3,550 profit. So that was a tough week for me, but still ended up having a good month. Again, you take the stop. Actually, Adobe is a great example. If I hadn't taken the stop on that, I would have lost a lot of money. The stock didn't work. It just didn't work on the day, okay? That's another thing, too, before I get into these other ones here. Uh, you know, it's, you can't take it personally if a trade doesn't set up and work. I know, I know that's tough for people, but, you know, sometimes I go back and I look and say, well, was there anything I missed? And, you know, a lot of times lately there isn't. It just, it's just part of it. Sometimes things don't work, okay? It's like sometimes you get in a, you get in a relationship with someone and you, you think it's going to work and everything's great and it's at the beginning and everything's fabulous and it doesn't work out. It's nobody's fault. It's not your fault. It's not the other person's fault. It's just life, okay? But you do have to do a method and a strategy and a training system that works way more than it doesn't, okay? But you can't blame yourself every time one thing doesn't work. And you can't have a conniption if one trade stops you out or doesn't work. Even if you have one loss in the week. You can't, you can't go hog wild. You can't trade all day and you lose everything, okay? Take the stop. You can always get up the next day and make money. And that's, that's really how you have to look at it. And it's not your fault. All right, people just take it so personally. June 26, BBBY was a continuation gap. If you risked $1,000, you would have made 800 bucks. Again, that was a short. ALDR on the 27th was a loss, 12.15. Then a small, tiny win right after 5.85. PayX was a good one, 1,050 profit. Fred was a good one, 629, 2150. And then Nike actually was along, $1,100 right before the holiday, and then it was off, okay? And then today was a and F, made $1,470. So on average, my system's around 80%. 81% here for this last period of the last five weeks, 22 winners and five losers. Sometimes I'm, I'm right under 80, sometimes I'm higher than 81. It just varies in the week of the month. But this gives you an idea. So for a period of the last five weeks, if you had risked $1,000, which you do not have to, but I'm telling you what you could expect, none of these trades did I hold to some crazy number. Today is a good example. 
okay? I actually could have made 75 cents more on the trade today and I, I didn't, I, I got out, okay? But you don't know. You don't know if it's gonna go to the second target or the third target. It did. But again, when your goal is in for the day, you take it. You watch the numbers, you watch the targets. So if you had risked $1,000 in the last 27 trades, you would have made what? 25,000. And this is, you know, again, sometimes you hold a little bit longer than I might. Sometimes you get out a little bit earlier than me. It doesn't matter. It's the idea of getting the trade, getting the stock, getting the gap, taking the entry with me, at least paying attention to where I'm saying I'm getting out. And if you don't get out exactly where I say, then you're on top of it to watch. Let me see if it goes a little bit more. If it doesn't, I'm out. Okay. That kind of thing. So anyways, in five trading weeks, you'd be on pace to make what? Over $260,000 a year. Obviously this is well over six figures a year. It is not out of the realm of possibility for you to make real money like this trading. Real money like this that you could be making an annual income trading for a career. Why, why isn't everyone doing this? Because people have so many issues with money, number one. That is a huge, huge problem. Number two, a lot of people have the mindset and philosophy that I discussed earlier that they believe that trading the market is gambling, which is a huge problem if you go into it thinking that. And number three, people don't know what to do. They have no clue what to do. They might go long AF, they might short Nike, they don't know what to do, they don't know what stock to watch. There are hundreds of thousands of stocks you can watch in any given day. To narrow something down to do exactly, exactly all these ticker symbols that I just gave you here for the last five weeks to know it, it, it this one, this one, this one, this one on the day to know that. How do I know it? Because I have a system. I have a 26 point rating system that's telling me what stock to watch. It tells me, Melissa, A and F, boom, do it. Rates 21 points. You can watch this to short today. And then I wait, and then I get the setup, and then I do it. Okay. So anyways, I have an 81% win ratio. If you want to learn my system. If you want to learn my system and be a career trader, you can do it. If you want to risk $1,000 a trade, you can. You have to have an account that can withstand that, which we'll talk about here how much money you need in a minute. If you, what if you can only risk half that? What if you can only risk $500 a trade? That's still you'd be on pace to make well over six figures a year. You'd still be on pace to make 130 grand a year. And I know half the year is over, okay? But you still have six months left in the calendar year. Give or take the holidays, okay? You still have a good period of trading period left in the year to make money. And more importantly than that, once you learn my system, it's something that you can do for the rest of your life. As long as the stock market exists in the U.S., they'll always have a close and open. The, they, the U.S. likes to have a controlled market. There will always be a close and there will always be an open. And as long as there is, there will always be gaps, okay? Which allows you to be able to see it beforehand and prep. Any questions before we keep going here? Let me know. The only difference between trading with a small account versus a big account is that you can risk more money if you have a larger account. I mean, this is common sense, but I'm telling you. So let's just say you don't have a large account, you have a small account. Then start with a small account. Even if you only made $50 a day or $100 a day, it's better than losing. And it's more money than you had yesterday if you didn't trade or if you didn't get on the path to trade. I have a lot of people that come to me and they want to wait till they have all this money that they can risk a thousand dollars a trade. I think that's a great goal, but you don't have to wait to get to that point because all along the way you're learning. If you start trading with me July 10th, which you wouldn't because it's today and the class is into the weekend, but you, you will be a better trader by December 10th, even if you only risked a hundred bucks to trade. If you wait till December 10th, so you can afford to risk a thousand dollars a trade, you won't know what you're doing till whenever, okay? Every person goes their own path. The learning process is almost invaluable for you to know what to do to take it, to have the conviction to take the risk. I think there's no problem with people taking their time doing it. If you want to go in and full on in and have the money to risk $1,000 per trade, do it. But there's no downside to you risking smaller and learning through the process and building up your account. If you can make $200 a day, that's still a thousand bucks a week. And I'm not saying you have the small account, but it's less than a thousand per day. 
but that's still four thousand a month and that's real money i mean that's still almost 50 grand a year some people that's what they make at their job working full time and this is only trading in the morning very very quickly and it's better than sitting on the sidelines and waiting okay there's a in fact it's patrick here patrick is doing the class with his wife this weekend uh, he's been following me for more than two years more uh, two years ago the class was a lot less expensive than it is right now and he probably wishes he had signed up in 2015 now he's finally doing it he came back around to me he tried something else it didn't work now he's back around now he's finally gonna learn in fact he was in the room today and we had a great trade first day in so you know sitting on the sidelines and waiting you know you're just wasting time you're, you're, you're really just wasting time and if you're doing a strategy and trading now whether it's forex or futures or some other kind of method okay not you know equity trading which is what i do and you're, if you're not making any money or if you're not making enough then you really have to think about resetting you know what you're doing with your trading or the money that you have in the trading account now how much do you need you can open up two types of accounts one is a proprietary j training account minimum 2500 bucks this you will typically get 10 to 1 buying power a margin so if you open up an account with 2500 you'd have 25,000 buying power to take positions okay if you want to open up a retail account you will need a minimum of 25,000 to be an active day trader and you get four to one intraday so that's your margin of leverage your buying power would be 100,000 okay as a professional responsible trading educator i believe people should learn how to trade first before risking any money at all in the market my trading room is limited only to people that have done the golden gap course you cannot join the room without it and one of the reasons is i want people to do well and i don't want people to lose and if you don't know what to do your chances of losing are high you have to learn the system okay your likelihood of doing well and being successful and making money is higher if you know what to do and if you want to be a good trader and are serious about it, you will want to learn. So, you know, I want to just briefly, briefly talk about this. I hardly ever mention this in any webinars, <clears throat> but I want to say this because I've just seen so many things out there lately. There's some places out there that say things that really are absolutely crazy. And I think this is where people get to the gambling mentality because there's a lot of people out there that say crazy stuff. Uh, there's some somebody out there right now saying you can take a thousand dollar trading account and make eight thousand dollars in 30 days that is completely irresponsible i am not telling you that okay that is nothing that i do um even if you you couldn't even open up a day trading account in any of the places i refer you to with a thousand bucks not that they aren't out there they are but i wouldn't refer people to go to those places so you know you have to think in your mind realistically it's realistic to risk a thousand bucks and make 25 grand in five weeks that's not crazy okay it's 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 crazy to think that you're going to take a thousand dollars in an account okay and make eight thousand dollars in 30 days in fact i i don't i can't even tell you that i think that anyone on the planet could even do it not even me and i'm a great trader so the fact is that you this is where the the gambling kind of mentality gets people all in their head they see the stuff out there they believe it because they want to believe it then when it doesn't work then they think trading is gambling and then they think nothing works but the fact is that people that believe this are irresponsible to begin with people that think this are crazy in their head be realistic have some common sense I mean, even if even if somebody, if I talked to somebody in the street in New York and said, "Do you think you can make a thousand, uh, eight thousand dollars with a thousand dollars in account?" I don't even know if somebody on the street that didn't know a thing about the market would believe that. They might want to believe it, but I don't even know if common sense, normal person that wouldn't know anything about trading would believe it. They probably would say, "I don't believe you, Melissa." And you know what? That would be a smart person because you shouldn't believe it. Okay. But the idea of actually making twenty-five grand, risking a thousand dollars a day—that's believable. Okay. And that's flipping your money around every day on average that makes sense that's not crazy okay does everyone understand what i'm trying to say think okay think common sense so getting back to what i was saying if your goal is to do this to make six figures a year as a career then you have to have a little bit more advanced size and even 500 dollars a trade is advanced 
That's an advanced size too, all right? But you can start small. You can work yourself up, all right? I mean, really, what would be so bad with making 50 grand a year, 60 grand a year? You know, like I said, a lot of people make that for their job. So another question I often get, which I thought I would review today is, what's the difference between the cash you need and then buying power margin? So when you open an account, you have an amount that you put in the account, then the broker gives you buying power margin. Now, again, I said there's two types of accounts, proprietary day trading and retail. The margin for those is different. One is four to one, one might be 10 to one. But the cost of the position has to do with the stock price that you trade. So if you trade a stock, okay, like today, let's just take the A and F like today. Like, let's just say you had shorted a and today at $10 at that price, which it was at at some point today. If you had shorted it with 3,000 shares, you would have needed what? 30,000 in buying power margin, not 30,000 in cash. Does everyone understand that? Because I think a lot of people don't understand that. So it depends what type of account you would have to take the position. You would need 3,000 in a prop account. In a retail account, you need 25,000 just to have one. But that doesn't mean that you would, even if you had 3,000 in a prop account, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't use your whole buying power for the whole trade if that's all the cash you had. The risk is still the risk between the difference between the entry and the stop. Like I said, if it's 30 cents and you wanna risk 300 bucks, you would take 1,000 shares and you would risk 300 bucks. If the 3,000 in cash you'd have in the account, but you'd take the position for 1,000 shares, let's say, well, no, 3,000. Here, I'm using the example of a $10 stock price. You would need 30,000 in BP. But your, your risk should never be your entire margin on your account or the entire cash in your account. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? If you don't ask me, and I can show you more examples to, to, to tell you, but, but the reason that, that regular, regular people can day trade is because you don't need $30,000 in cash to take a position like this in a stock like a &F. And actually, there's a lot of stocks that are trading more expensive than this. And again, because as a day trader, we trade with margin or BP, it, you don't need the full cash. Does everybody get it? Because I had some questions about that recently too. Now, going into the quickness, again, we're talking about making trades and making money in 30 minutes. How I'm able to do the trades and get in and out so quickly? How does your brain work? It's just like anything else that you would do. It is practice. It's practice, 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 practice. I'm in such the habit of looking at things and looking at the gaps and seeing the trades of the one minute chart and taking the trades and putting the stops and getting out. I've been doing this for more than eight years. I trade in a one minute chart very expertly. In fact, I don't think there's anyone else that can do it better than me. It would be very difficult for me to find someone to replace me to run my trading room. If my brain is trained to just see it and do it. And so the benefit of you know making money and becoming an expert in one strategy and system is that you will just train your brain to do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Another reason why people have such a tough time making money, six figures or any money at all as a trader, is that they do not stick with one strategy or one system. They never stick with anything long enough to actually get good at it. I have done that. I really credit myself for doing that. I mean, I really, really credit myself for doing that. It's one of the reasons, one of the number one reasons for my success is that I don't do anything else. I never will do anything else. And that's why I'm so good at what I do. And if you want to make money, you only need to do one thing. And how will you make more? Taking more size. Eventually getting to the point where you can take 6,000 shares of something instead of three, 5,000 shares of something instead of 2,500, risking $2,000 a trade instead of one, okay? Your brain is this amazing thing, but it really, it's, everything has to be like in sync, okay? And that's why I tell people, don't trade when you're sick. Don't trade if you haven't had breakfast. Don't trade if you're tired. Don't trade if you're having an argument with somebody. Don't trade if you're in a bad mood, okay? Everything has to be going in the right direction. And also, if you train yourself to be in a habit, we're creatures of habit as human beings. We're, we're, just, we're just so habitual. Like, 
earlier in the year when it was winter, it was really hard to get up in the morning early and go work out. And that's when the that's when the best time is for me to work out. Because if I don't get it done in the morning, it's so hard for me to go later in the day after I train because I have too many things to do. Okay, because I'm running a business and I have a lot of other projects and things I'm working on. Or like tonight I have a webinar. Okay, but in the in the winter it's so hard in New York. It's so cold and it was so dark. And I got out of the habit earlier this year of getting up in the morning at five o'clock, five thirty to go to the gym. It was it was it was so painful then for me to get up every morning, which I did get into the habit. Now I'm back into the habit of getting up at 5.30. But it was like hell in a hand bucket for me to get my body and my brain to think, get up, get up, get up, to do it, to get back into the habit. We aren't just creatures of habit. We we do things, and once we get in the habit, it's just there we are. And, and now it's just like I get up every day at 5.30, I go, I come back, I trade, I do my thing. It's Everything's in sync again. But when you get out of the habit of doing something, then it's hard to get back into it. And if you're not in the habit of trading well, if you're not in the habit of trading and making money, if you're not in the habit of even knowing what to do, it's like like you're like, oh my God, how is this possible? But I'm telling you that it is possible because our brains and our bodies, we're just creatures of habit. So it's training yourself. You're just, you gotta train it. And that's why you have to do the class. You train your brain to do it. And that's also why being in the training room is important too. Because I'm saying it. I'm forcing you to do it by like calling it. Okay. I'm saying this is it. A and F. It's a good one. Okay. Any questions so far? How's everybody doing? Talking, talking, talking here. One thing I just want to note, you know, also that things are different in reference to day training versus, you know, investing, okay? That, you know, day trading is you are chunking out the money for profit. You're pulling profits out of the market. Small, medium, big, whatever. This is not, this isn't about, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not becoming some big investor like Warren Buffett when you're day trading here, okay? The financial freedom is that you have time to yourself when you're not stuck in an office all day for eight to 10 hours and you're making good money, okay? So if you if you want to become some big investor or do something with that, you can. I mean, there's other things you can do with life, but the, but the purpose of day trading, what you're trying to do with that is not, it's really not the purpose of day trading. The purpose of day trading is just pulling one thing up out of the market, okay? And pulling money out every day. Uh, Kathy, I just lost the whole room there. Can you hear me? I have no idea what just happened. Hello? Oh. <laughs> I don't know what just happened there. <laughs> I'm like, hello? <laughs> that was funny. All right, anyways, if you're interested, I teach a class on my method. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a course that teaches a strategy and how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. And that's the meat and potatoes of my system. That's how I'm able to pick all the stocks that you saw that I picked in the last five weeks, okay? The class also teaches you how to play the stock on the day, which is important. Okay, and the course also teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on a very advanced level, and that's what you'll learn from me. So the 26-point checklist is really the most invaluable part of my system because it teaches you what stock to look for every day. It saves you time by doing the prep work in the morning for you so you don't have to think. You know to watch it. You go by the point rating, okay? And again, one of the things that makes day trading a good career is the time that you're spending doing it. It's just not a lot of time. You prep in the morning before you trade, and like I'm usually in and out of the trade in a few minutes. But the time that I am looking is between 9.30 and 10. And it's very exciting to be able to make, you know, a thousand bucks in just a couple of minutes. I mean, it's, you know, there's, there's no better feeling than that. A lot of people um, come to me, and I know people have done different classes and things, and, uh, but I really have a very unique method here, which I do, and a lot of people out there that teach gaps don't know what they're doing. A lot of people teach gap fills. That doesn't work. When I take the gap like an A and F, I'm going and taking the gap in the direction of the gap for one thing. I do prefer to short. One of the reasons I'm doing that is because stocks tend to move faster to the downside. 
But I believe that when you decide to trade, whatever you choose to trade, whether you go long or short, whatever stock symbol you do, you really have to have conviction in what you're doing. When I take a trade, like I said at the beginning, I believe that I have conviction it's gonna work. My expectation of myself is that I will make money on the day and I expect myself to you know, have positive results. Right? Rob is asking a good question here. Why do 95% of day traders lose money? I did kind of answer that a little bit ago, Rob. I don't know if you caught that or if you signed in late. No, actually you were here. I'm looking where you signed in for uh, 432. There's several reasons. One, people struggle with money in general. In general, people have a poor attitude about money, okay? That is a huge, huge factor and one of the reasons that people lose money taking risk. They do not have a good relationship with money. Also, people, when they trade the market, do not have a structure and a system that they follow every day on a regular basis. Like somebody in here, I think it was John, he said earlier, do you follow your stops? That was, that was a great question. He probably was basically saying sometimes people don't. You know, you have to have a structure and then you got to follow it. A lot of people don't. Sounds like why wouldn't they? But I know that people don't. I force the structure on people. One of the ways I force it is I close the trading room when we're done trading. I'll close the trading room at 10.15 and we're done. If people sit at their desk and trade all day to 4 o'clock, that's their problem and lose. So you have to have a structure and you have to have a system and you have to follow it. And not only that, it has to work. A lot of people also think that the more that they trade, the more money they will make. That's another thing people make a mistake. You, a lot of people assume that if I, they take 10 trades, they have a higher chance of making more money. No. The more trades you take, the more money you have at risk, and the less chance you have of doing well. Why do you think I only do one trade a day? Okay? So people, people think that they have to do more. They trade all day. They do multiple trades. They don't stop when they're up. I mean, I could, I could, go, I could talk for an hour about why people lose money. I could name every reason in the world, every bad habit I had at the beginning, everything I was taught originally that was wrong, everything anyone's taught me. I mean, there's so many reasons. So, you know, uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever traded before, but there's a bazillion reasons why people lose. Also, at the beginning, I said people think trading the market is gambling. <laughs> so if, you, if people think that, if that's really what you believe, it's gonna be hard for you to turn that mindset around. Also, you know, when you start out trading, everybody, including me when I started out at the end of 2008, when you start out trading, you lose. I don't, I don't know one person that has ever started trading and all of a sudden made money right out of the gate and just went, took off like a, you know, did amazing. And you will go through the beginning struggles, okay? And if you if you found me, I'm sure you've taken classes or lost money in the market or done something until you found me. It's very, very few people in the world, I don't know anyone, that's came right out, never traded in their life, all of a sudden trade, make money. So you have to overcome whatever happened to you at the beginning of your career with the losses you had in taking classes where you didn't learn or losses in the market. If you mentally are not strong enough to overcome that, which many people don't, why? Because they have bad relationships with money, okay, negative attitudes, then it will be challenging for you to do well. And I'm not saying that it wasn't challenging for me to get over that situation with myself too. It was. At, at some point, I had to force the discipline on myself. I was doing well. I figured it out. I was making money in the morning and then there were days I wanted to trade all day and I thought it the more I traded and then I started to force myself to leave the house and go to the gym after. I mean, it was like a process of about a year to like force the discipline on myself to stop and get out of the habit of trading all day and realize the less is more philosophy. It was work for myself to do it. It was work for myself also when I started becoming profitable not to think that I wanted to make all the money that I ever lost at the beginning back in a month. That was another, I mean, I, I was, it was real, real work for me to overcome all of these things that I'm discussing with you. And if you are not emotionally equipped and intellectual enough to think, to know that you must do it, and it's a hundred percent your responsibility to do so, to overcome those obstacles mentally and emotionally, then you will have a difficulty making it. And most people can't, they won't. 
It helps if you have a mentor like me, but a lot of people will still have difficulties with it. I'm a very optimistic person, okay? I've always been successful in everything I've done. I understood that about myself. When I would get into situations where I wasn't doing well, I knew that it was 100% my responsibility and I, I was so frustrated with myself that I that I, there was absolutely no way that I wasn't gonna get this down, and I did. And then, and then, then when I would do something like a bad habit, I would say, gosh darn it, I am gonna stop doing this stupid thing if, if, no matter what. And, I, and I'm not saying it, was, it didn't take work, it took work, but I was determined, absolutely determined to do it. Just determined to do it. I'm determined to do anything I set my sights to do. It's just, that's who I am. But if you're not, then you'll lose, okay? Uh, you know, I mean, I could just talk about this all night long, actually. <laughs> but there's there's some reasons, okay? But there's there's like a million more. So, I mean, if you want to be in the five percent of the people that make it, I I don't want I don't want to tell you that that you can't. I think that people can, but even if you take all the people, Rob, that I ever taught since I started the business five years ago. And all the people I'll teach all the rest of this calendar year, and all the people I'll teach the next, you know, however many years I have the business, that it will still be a blip in the number of people on the planet of the billions of people that trade the market, even if every person that I teach makes it, which not every person I teach will make it. Because some people will not be able to overcome the negativity they've had since they started trading. I work with people, I try to help them, but there are some people that have issues, they, they will admit them themselves. So, you know, you have to understand that it is your responsibility to do well as a trader. But I was honest with you today and I told you, you know, people have told me, Melissa, I'm struggling with the sizing. Really, actually, the biggest problem that people have in the room is the sizing. I mean, people, I think people in general in the trading room have a positive attitude. They see me do it every day. They see me do it every day. They see themselves do it all, over and over and over again. They see themselves have good days. Um, but I think, you know, people just struggle with the mathematics of it, the arithmetic. It's a simple problem to resolve. But, you know, from people in the room, that is the biggest challenge that people in the room have trading with me. I told you that in the webinar. Not the, not the money, because I just lecture so much about money. Although there are a few people that just have huge, major money issues, emotional issues, uh, obstacles in their head that they have to overcome. And, and I do offer private mentoring sessions to help people with that. I think very positive, and I try to help every person that comes to me, but it is your responsibility as a human being, as an adult, to, to know what your obstacles are and to fix them, okay? So that's the lesson for that. <laughs> Anyways, getting back on track here with the webinar, it's about focus and being practical, and I'm teaching people a skill set which they can use. So here are some comments in the trading room today. Again, nice day in here for some people, had a really good day, some people had a medium day, some people had a small day, some people got out of the whole thing, some people held it, some people took half off, okay? I told you where I got out. But my class will teach you how to make money in the market. It will also teach you a strategy on trading gaps. You will focus on shorts with me and we will get in and out quickly and you will learn the entries and I call them in the room. You have to take the class to be in the room. That is a prerequisite, okay? But the training room is a great support system. Talking about, you know, not just the entries and the exits and the stops, but also the uh, having an emotional support system to even go over questions like this. Because, I mean, you could have asked me a question like that in the room and I could have gone over it for you. So if you want to empower yourself to learn how to make money in the market, you have an opportunity to learn with me. I am teaching how people how to do it. People are doing well. You know, Susanna, for example, is um, a yeah, health practitioner. She really didn't have much experience trading. She traded a little bit before she came to me and she's doing very well. So I teach a course, it's this weekend, July 15th and 16th. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick and place stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. You do need internet access. The cost of the class is $49.99. If you're interested, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com, okay? If you wanna sign up, you have to email me for registration papers to this email, melissa at thestockswish.com. I also do a class which I review long-term trends. It's called the Trends Course. It's August 1st and 2nd from 12 to 4. This is not going to teach you how to day trade, but if you want to learn how to swing trades or, you know, look at a long-term trend in a chart, you can learn this. This is a class in August. 
And if you want to do both classes, you can save $500 and sign up for both at the same time, which is a good deal because it gives you an overall broader perspective on everything. Cost of this combo special is $54.99. And I decided to extend the July 4th trading room special because I took off last week and I had a bunch of people that emailed me last night and this morning. I was running a July 4th special through yesterday. I'm extending it till Friday. Take advantage of this offer. This is a great deal. I'm giving the trading room free to the end of the calendar year. If you want to be in the room and take my trades and make money, you can do the class this weekend and be in the room for the rest of 2017. This is a huge deal for people. It expires Friday. There, I'm not making any exceptions. If you want to sign up, you have to email me. And I do limit the number of people I'm taking for the class. Um, I already have people signed up. I took pretty much off last week, so I really didn't get back to everybody on time. I needed some time off to relax, and I'm very glad I took it. And that's another thing. You take time for yourself. You know, if you want to, I mean, today was such a great day. I can't help but wonder. I was just like, boom, right on top of that thing today. I mean, I was so rested and relaxed from being off for the last week. In fact, it's funny because Shower Singer always says he loves when I go on vacation because when I go on vacation and I come back, I'm always, I'm always just like right on top of it. We always have a huge week. <laughs> So look for this week to be huge. <laughs> um, anyway, summer is here. And the fast money is the best. I am doing a trade room open house. If also if you want to come, starting tomorrow. If you want to come, no password. You can come into the room. Go to the website, www.thestockswitch.com. Log into the trading room. Boom. No password. You can come in. If you have trouble getting in, you can email info at thestockswitch.com. And again, if you want to sign up for the trading room special for the class this weekend, email me at melissa@thestockswish.com. Now, any other questions? We do have like five minutes here from anyone. A couple of good questions today. Not a lot of questions, but a couple of good questions. I think, you know, the best thing I can think of um, Rob was saying about traders, other traders and stuff is you, you know, think and think overall, you know, about life and things that seem impossible. Sometimes if you, you know, things that seem impossible to people tend, tend to be things that don't seem impossible to people tend not to be. And I, and I always like to use the example of the presidential election because I, I, I thought that Trump was going to win. In fact, I remember saying it like last summer. And one of the reasons I said it, I was just telling people, and nobody wanted to hear me say that, but I was saying he's, Trump's going to win. And at that time, they were calling Hillary to win, and nobody believed what I was saying. But every time he spoke, he said, we're going to win, we're going to win, we're going to win. He was saying what he wanted to happen, and he manifested it for himself. So that mindset... I believe absolutely played a big factor in his ability to win, which many people thought was impossible. And to this day, people can't believe. So you must have a certain mindset to do well trading. But I believe that you need to have a successful mindset to make a lot of money, period. I don't care what you do. In today's world, the competition for any career that you choose to do is fierce, okay? So if you wanna do well, you better have your head on straight because there's lots of people that are competing against you. So if you think something's impossible, you, you, will, you will not be successful. If you think that there's a chance you will be, you've got a higher odds than the guy next to you that doesn't believe he can do squat. Uh, what time does the trading room open? It opens at 8.30, but I don't start talking till 9.00. I didn't see how the market closed today. I will do a video or review it in the room tomorrow morning, doggy. But overall, the market's bullish. We're not bearish. If, if, just to be general, from this morning's gap, I'm telling you, I don't know where we went today. It didn't look since before we, we had the webinar here, but I'll look in the morning. But the market's still extremely bullish. Um, the training, the class, the Golden Gap class is not taped. You must be there live. Um, you can email me or contact me if for some reason you miss a portion of it. You are allowed one free retake in the next 30 days. So if you can't do the full class this weekend, in August then, you can do the portion of the class you missed or get with me after the fact. 
And then I'll just say one last thing or let everybody go. I think one of the things that's beneficial for when people come to me, although, you know, it, though some people takes time. Like I told you about the guy, Patrick, who took two years to decide to do the class. He followed me for two years. So, you know, I think even if you have a negative mindset, you, I've, I've turned that around for people. If you're in the room with me and making money, you see it's possible. If you're not and you're just watching my videos, you see it's possible over a period of weeks and months and years. Whether you wait two years from now to do it or not is, is your own fault for waiting and missing out. Because who knows what the class price will be in two years. It'll be more than five grand, I can tell you that. But the point is though that I have had a great effect on people to change their negative mindset. But the timing of that varies from person to person and it's only dependent on you. But I have had a positive impact on changing people's uh, negative uh, you know, thoughts in the market. Simply from making money with me, doing the class and seeing it happen and following me for a period of time. So, you know, if you understand that it is all in your head, then change your mindset because you're just missing out and you're waiting and you're missing out in life. It's really hard to believe that half the year 2017 is over. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. I'm going to blink my eye three times and it will be Thanksgiving. I mean, it, that is just crazy. But, you know, we've got a lot of trades to do left in the next half of this year. And I am more determined than ever to make it, you know, to make this year be a bang. So I've got a lot of work to do. Email me if you have any questions, Steve V. I think you did email me. You can call me if you want tonight. And then if anybody wants to come to the open house, you can be there this week. And if you want to sign up for the class, email me too. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Online Trader Central.